Hi, I'm Broderick. I'm an applications engineer at Apex Microtechnology, and you're watching the Apex Power Design Walkthrough Series. In just four minutes, I'm going to show you how to select the best amplifier for the job, see how big of a heatsink we're going to need, and as an added bonus, we're going to apply it to a bridge circuit. So what are the requirements? Let's say we have a one nanofarad piezo for mirror deflection, and we want it to oscillate back and forth at 50 kilohertz. This particular piezo requires plus or minus 350 volts for full-scale deflection. Do some math, and it turns out we need 110 milliamps to drive it. Let's bump that up to 130 milliamps for part-to-part -part variability. When you open up Power Design, you'll see something like this. The first step is the part selector. Remember the requirements? 130 milliamps, 700 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, and 50 kilohertz. Unfortunately, those requirements are too demanding for any one Apex part. However, I'm not against floating the load between two amplifiers in a bridge configuration. Now we have PA90. Its 400 volt rail-to-rail -rail rating allows up to 758 volts of swing in bridge mode, its current rating gives us lots of room, and the slew rate and bandwidth are more than five times what we need. Let's keep going. In the Safe Operating Area page, we can find out how hot the PA90s are going to get. Don't worry about the supplies just yet. There's an easy way to figure those out. Plus or minus 350 volts differentially across the load, one nanofarad at 50 kilohertz. Now we can go to advanced options and indicate that we want to bridge this PA90 with another PA90. Same supplies is the best bet for symmetric outputs. And look at this. It suggests supplies, plus or minus 185. I bet we can stack a bunch of 48 volt supplies together and get plus or minus 192 volts. That's it for the electrical inputs. Now we can see that the average power dissipation for each PA90 is just under 19 watts. The sheet also tells us that the smallest heatsink we can use would have a thermal resistance of 3.08 degrees C per watt. Bigger heatsink means smaller thermal resistance. Let's see what kind of heatsinks are out there and come right back. In the heatsink page, I'll enter the package, which is a power SIP, and the 3.08 heatsink rating. HS32 gives an even lower thermal resistance, and it even looks big enough to fit both of our PA90s. If we split the 1.33 degrees C per watt thermal rating, each PA90 will see roughly double that, 2.66. Going backwards, we can find out that a heatsink of 2.66 yields a toasty case temperature of 77 degrees, and a reasonable junction temperature of 112 degrees. So that's a small sample of what you can do with power design. You can also stabilize circuits, design filters, and get suggestions for closed loop components. It's a great first step for working with high power analog, and it can save countless hours in the design process. Thanks for watching.